Welcome back to part two of our perfume bottle tutorial. If you missed part one, don't worry, you can find the link in the description below. Now that we've completed the modeling in part one, it's time to bring our creation to life with some stunning textures. In this segment, we'll explore how to apply realistic materials, adjust shaders, and enhance the overall appearance of the bottle. So grab your mouse and let's dive right into texturing and make this perfume bottle truly stand out. With our perfume bottle fully modeled, it's time to texture it. Let's set up our shader editor to work with materials. First, drag the bottom section of your screen up to create space for a new panel, and switch it to the shader editor from the menu. To tidy up the interface, press N to hide the side menu and make more room. Finally, switch your view to rendered mode so you can see how the materials and lighting interact with the model as you texture it. Now we're all set up to start texturing the perfume bottle. All right, so as you can see, the scene is looking quite dark. We need to add some lighting to bring everything to life. First in the shader editor, we'll switch from object to world so we can work with the scene lighting. Select the background node and press Control T. This adds an environment texture to your world shader. If the Control T shortcut doesn't work, don't worry. Go to Edit Preferences and under Add-ons, search for Node Wrangler and enable it. This will make node-based work much easier. Now that the environment texture is added, locate your HDRI high dynamic range image. I'm gonna use Blender's default environment texture for this tutorial, specifically a city environment HDRI, which provides nice, even lighting throughout the scene. This gives us some nice lighting to work with right off the bat. Once you have the environment set up, we'll switch back to object shading in the shader editor so we can start texturing the perfume bottle. Before we begin with the materials, let's change the render engine from EV to Cycles for better lighting and reflections, especially when working with transparent or glossy materials. If you have a strong graphics card, switch the rendering device from CPU to GPU for faster rendering performance. Now, select your perfume bottle and let's add a new material. Start by reducing the roughness to zero. This will make the bottle perfectly smooth, giving it a nice glossy surface. Next, under the transmission setting, increase the transmission weight to one. This makes the bottle fully transparent, simulating the look of glass. Add a bit of style and depth to the bottle. Let's incorporate a gradient texture. Press Shift A, and then add a gradient texture node. With the gradient texture selected, press Control T again to enable the texture coordinate node and the mapping node. We'll need these to control the orientation of the gradient. Now press Shift 8 again and add a color ramp node. Connect the gradient texture into the color ramp and then connect the color ramp to the base color input of your perfume bottles. At this point, you'll notice that the gradient is moving from left to right, but we want it to go from bottom to top instead. To adjust this, go to the mapping node and change the Y rotation value to 90 degrees. This will, this will flip the gradient from bottom to top. Now, let's make it more interesting. I want the top of the bottle to be dark and the bottom to be lighter, as we're gonna add a label to the bottle later on. To do this, simply flip the sliders in the color ramp node so the darker color is at the top and the lighter color is at the bottom. Now we have a nice gradient effect that's set up perfectly for the label area on the bottle. All right, so let's move on and change the color of the bottom part of the bottle. We're going for a nice orange tone here, something that really pops. Once you're happy with the color, let's dive into setting up the materials for the inside of the bottle. Under the material slots, create a new material. Once that new material is created, we don't need it. So go ahead and select it, then hit delete to remove it. Now, head back to the first material we already set up and simply copy everything from this material. Next, in the second material slot, we are going to paste the copied material here. This will give us a good base to work with for texturing the inside of our perfume bottle. Assign the second material to the inside. Assign the second material to the inside of the perfume bottle. First, 
select the bottle and press the backslash. This allows us to focus solely on the bottle without distractions. Now, switch to the solid view mode so we can see what we're doing. Hit tab to go into edit mode. In face select mode, we'll need to delete a face on the bottle so we can access the interior. Select a face on the exterior of the bottle and hit delete to remove it. With that out of the way, we can now select the inside faces of the bottle. Press Alt-Z to enter X-ray mode. This makes it easier to see and select the faces inside the bottle. Once you've selected a face on the interior, press Ctrl plus on the numpad to grow the selection. Keep pressing it until the entire inside of the bottle is selected. Now, under the material slot, select the second material we created earlier and click Assign. This will assign the second material to the inside faces of the bottle. To make sure everything worked properly, press Alt-Z to return to the solid view and hit backslash again to bring back the full scene. Now switch to rendered view to see how it looks. You can test the assignment by temporarily changing the second material's color to something noticeable like blue. If, if everything's correct, you should see that blue color inside the bottle. Once you've confirmed it's applied correctly, just undo the color change to bring it back to normal. With the second material still selected in the middle slot, let's adjust the color ramp for the inside of the bottle. Drag the sliders to refine the gradient, and we'll even add an extra slider here to make this a vibrant, bright orange color. This will really give some nice contrast inside the bottle. Now, it's time to add a label to the outside of the perfume bottle. To keep things organized, make sure you've selected the first material under the material slot. We'll then drag our shader nodes down in preparation to add the label texture. First, we need to add a principled BSDF shader node to handle the label texture. To do that, press Shift A, go to Shader, and select Principled BSDF. This will allow us to assign specific properties like the label's color and roughness. We need to mix this new Principled BSDF with the existing material. So next, press Shift A again and add a mix shader. Place it between the Principled BSDF and the material output. Now, we'll load the label texture image. With the new principled BSDF selected, press Ctrl-T to automatically add an image texture node, thanks to the Node Wrangler add-on. At this point, you can locate your label image. If you're following along, I'll, I'll be linking this label in the description so you can download it and work alongside me. Once the texture is loaded, change its settings from Repeat to Extend under the Image Texture node. This ensures the texture doesn't tile unnecessarily across the surface, which is important for a clean label application. Next, let's switch our viewport from the Shader Editor to the UV Editor. Here, we can handle the unwrapping of our perfume bottle to properly align the label. Hit Tab to enter Edit Mode. Now we need to select the faces on the bottle where the label will go. In Face Select mode, select two main faces on the front where the label will be, and then press Ctrl plus on the numpad a few times to grow the selection around it. Once the faces are selected, hit U and choose Unwrap to unwrap those faces in the UV editor. This ensures that our taps neatly onto the bottle. Inside the UV editor, press A to select all the unwrapped UV islands. Then press R to rotate the UVs and align them so the label fits perfectly on the front of the bottle. Use G to move it and S to scale it until the label aligns with the bottle's geometry. We also need to isolate the label from other parts of the bottle. So press Ctrl I to invert the selection, selecting the rest of the bottle. Then scale these UVs down and move them to the black area of the UV map, ensuring they don't interfere with the label texture. With everything aligned, let's switch back to the Shader Editor. We'll now use the Image Texture node connected to the label to control the blending between the two shaders inside the Mix Shader. This will allow the label to display in the correct location and blend properly with the rest of the bottle's material. Alright, let's continue. So first, we're going to connect our Mix Shader 
bring the mix shader here, then connect it into the surface output. Now connect the first principled BSDF to the mix shader, and also connect the second principled BSDF to the same mix shader. We're blending between these two shaders now. Disconnect the texture node for a second, and we're going to use this texture to control where each BSDF will show on the bottle. So connect the image texture node into the factor input of the mix shader. This will allow the texture to dictate how the two materials blend together. Next, we want to invert this label texture. So press Shift A, go to Color, and add an Invert node. Now, connect the Invert node just after the texture and plug it into the factor input of the mix shader. You'll notice the label placement is now flipped correctly, and it looks just how we want. Now, let's adjust the roughness of the second principled. We want the bottle to be nice and glossy, so we'll increase the roughness value to 1, and now we've got a much smoother and more reflective look going on. Everything's coming together. Now let's jump to texturing the lid. With the cover selected, create a new material and set the base color to a nice light yellow shade. Increase the metallic value to 1 to give it a polished metal-like finish. And set the roughness to about 0.1. That'll give the lid that shiny premium feel, really sleek and reflective. Next, let's work on those rims we created. Select the rims and create a new material for them. Give them the same light yellow color we used for the lid. Set the metallic value to 1 as well, and you'll see that the rims have a clean, metallic look that complements the rest of the bottle. You can also make them a bit lighter than the lid to create some subtle contrast. Now let's do something special with the bottle itself. Select the bottle's nodes and press Shift Dutch to duplicate them. Move them down to give us some space to work. Select the color ramp we've been using for the gradient effect and reset it by pressing backspace. Now, preview this color ramp. It'll control a new look for the bottle. All right, so we're gonna start by connecting this color ramp to the roughness of our principled BSDFF. Just drag the output from the color ramp and connect it to the roughness input. Now, when you preview the color ramp, you'll notice that all the white areas represent the rougher parts, and the black areas are the shinier parts. Let's tweak it a bit by dragging the black slider over to the right, making the black section a little larger. This will increase the shiny area, leaving us with a good balance between rough and glossy surfaces. Next, we'll connect the same color ramp to the sheen. Open up the sheen options on the principled BSDF, and connect the color ramp output to the sheen weight input. This will allow us to control the sheen based on the color ramp as well. Now let's reduce the sheen roughness just a tiny bit. This will make the shinier areas stand out even more, creating a subtle, polished effect that adds depth to the bottle. Let's now preview the whole mix shader to see how everything is coming together. You should start seeing how the roughness and sheen variations are giving the bottle a more refined and premium look. Now it's time to set up our camera. Press Shift A to add a camera to the scene. Once the camera is added, press Control Alt 0 to snap the camera to the current viewport, aligning it with the view you've set up. This gives you a good starting angle for your render. Next, head to the Render Properties tab, scroll down to the Film section, and make sure to check the Transparent box. This hides the HDRI background in the render, keeping only your model visible, which is perfect for product shots. We're also going to add a ground plane now. Press Shift-A, add a plane, and then scale it up by pressing and moving your mouse until it's large enough to sit under the bottle. Let's give it a lighter gray material so it contrasts nicely with the bottle and distract from it. Switch back to the 3D viewport and press N to bring up the side menu. Under the View tab, make sure you check the Lock Camera to View box. This allows you to adjust your camera position while staying inside the camera frame so you can fine-tune the angle and composition. Once you're happy with your camera positioning, go back to the side menu and uncheck the Lock Camera to View to lock the camera in place. Next, let's select our plane and switch to Edit Mode. Here, we'll select this edge and press E to extrude it along the Z-axis, creating a bit of height for the plane. 
Now hit A to select everything and let's scale it along the x-axis to give it a more appropriate width. Moving on to the world properties, we'll reduce the strength of our HDRI lighting to about 0.5. That's still a bit too much, so let's dial it down further to 0.3 for a softer ambience. Now let's add some additional lighting to the scene. Press Shift A, go to the light menu, and add an area light. Press G and then Z to move it up a bit, giving it some height above the scene. We'll want to scale it up a bit as well. Just grab the light and scale it along the x-axis for better coverage. Next, let's position this light. Rotate it and move it into place in front of our model. Now under the Light Properties tab, increase the power to about 100. With that light in place, let's duplicate it for more illumination. Select the light, press Shift-D to duplicate it, and then right-click to snap it right back in position. Now rotate this new light and move it in front of the model as well. Again, we'll scale it along the x-axis to match the first light. Now, select the plane again and move it slightly forward. Press J and then Y to nudge it closer to the camera for a better framing of our scene. Now we can increase the strength of our HDRI lighting back to about 0.7. Let's also head to the Render Properties tab and under Color Management, change the look to High Contrast. Lastly, we need to set our render samples for a clean image. I'll go with 200 samples to ensure we capture all the details. Now that we're all set, let's go ahead and render out our image. And that's a wrap on part two of our perfume bottle tutorial. We've successfully applied textures and materials to give our bottle a stunning finish. If you enjoyed this tutorial and want to revisit the modeling process, be sure to check out the link to part one in the description below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more tutorials. Thanks for watching and happy blending.